hopefully this will be a fairly quick video. Um, but I just wanted to do something because I have just posted uh, a blog post this morning as I record this. I don't know if I'll get around to editing this today. But um, there's a blog post about how I uh, upload my limited edition products to Squarespace. Um, because there's a, an easier, well, there is a good way of interacting with Squarespace to upload products. And I know some people don't do it that way, do it the hard way. And it's something that I said I was going to do a blog post on ages ago and someone reminded me. So I threw something together this morning that just sort of explains it. And basically, um, it uses the import-export CSV um, function in Squarespace. And there's a lot of things that I don't like about the Squarespace product interface. And to be honest, the things that I don't like about it, I don't like to the extent that without the CSV uploader, I'm not sure I'd use Squarespace at all. Especially not when doing kind of limited edition 40 pieces that are each individual. Um, to do that using their actual website would be painfully, painfully slow. So basically, a CSV is like a single page on a spreadsheet and um, without the kind of the cleverness that spreadsheets can have. So it's literally just a table of values, essentially whether they're words or numbers. But um, I don't think you can have calculations within them that are calculated um, and you can't have more than one page and so on and so forth. So it's basically just a table of data. Um, and what you can do is you can ask Squarespace to export your shop as a CSV and what it will do is it will give you a document that has all of the... Well, no, interesting thing is they don't give you all of the information but um, they've picked what they think is important to put in the CSV and that's what they'll give you. And so that is which shop on your website it's in, which is important if you've got more than one shop like I do. So whether it's in the regular shop or the limited edition shop. The URL for that product and then the name, the description, the description stored as HTML. So if you know how to type things in HTML and what each part of it does, you can upload a formatted um, kind of paragraphed, you could do a mini essay as a description and it can turn that all into HTML and give you that, which is quite handy for when you want to then put um, information back in. Um, but it does mean that you've got to kind of understand HTML to an extent. Um, and then there are product variations, uh, prices, weight, size, whether it's visible, whether it's on sale, um, what the stock levels are, and so on and so forth. So, what I did, and if you click the link in the description, you'll go to the blog post, and then there's a link to the spreadsheet, but I made myself a spreadsheet where I have a page of references, so just columns of what type of piece I have. And in the example, I just say, you know, mug, bowl, vase, I think is the ones that I used. But for me, obviously, I can have pebble mug and I'll drippy slippy and so on. So you, you kind of, you put everything into that page, all the forms that you sell, all the glazes you use, and then I have size and clay because obviously I have um, more than one clay. If you don't have more than one clay, that wouldn't matter. And if there's something else that you vary, then you could use that instead. But I have that as a single page where I put the information in once. And then for each update, I have another sheet 
It uses what's called data validation, but it just it's where you get a drop down of values and it's getting those values from the reference page. So it looks to see what I've said I can make and then I fill in the next page each time I do an update. I just go through the pieces I've got, number them and say, what is it? And I can click on the drop down and say, it's a mug and it's this size in this glaze. So it makes it quite easy to just go through a whole list of stuff and enter what each one is. And then the part that saves me all the time is I then made formulae to pull that information back out into what um, Squarespace in the format that they need it for things to work. So it automatically gives me the product URL, the title, which is taken from, like it's a description of the product. So it will say large storm blue mug or whatever. And so it takes it from there. And then I've also got a little bit of text that does the description in HTML. So it will say, this product listing is for a large swirly uh, waterfall mug or yeah, that sort of thing. Um, what that means is that all I've got to do is fill in that one table of just what each piece is. And then I get something that I can export that will go straight into Squarespace with the titles, with the description, with the URL, everything set correctly, um, well, relatively correctly, and then I just need to go back in and add the images because there's no good way of doing that that I've found. Uh, and anyway, yeah, so I've done a blog post and a shared Google Sheets file that will give you that. But more broadly, if you're using Squarespace, it is well worth getting used to that CSV because it's incredibly useful for adjusting prices. Um, the way they do it would be hell to adjust prices. If you wanted to make everything in your shop ever so slightly more expensive, you would have to go into each product individually, click on each variation of that product individually, and manually type the new price. Whereas when you can export it as a CSV, you can, what I do is I open the CSV up, I put two columns next to the price uh, column. One of them is my increase, because I don't always want them to go up by the same amount. Um, so generally, if I'm just nudging the prices up, what I'd do is I'd do something like uh, a £2.50 increase for all the mugs and tumblers, um, £2.50 increase for other small things like the trinket bowls, which incidentally is what I'm throwing at the moment, um, and I'm throwing it in the PF580 if anyone's been keeping track of my white clay alternatives. I'm pretty sure this is going to win overall because I'm still enjoying throwing with it. Um, but then something like a fruit bowl, where it's significantly more money, a £2.50 increase isn't proportionate. If you think you're going to do that increase on something that costs £10, on something that costs £100, the increase, if it was proportionate, should be £25. If you don't generally go in that big a jump but um, basically I do it that way so I have control over how much each one increases so back to what I was saying before we two columns next to it one so you've got the price then you've got the increase and then I would do a very simple formula that added the price and the increase and you've now got your new price and then what you can do is you can copy all the values in your new price column. You click on the first cell in your old price column and then uh, it's edit paste special paste as values. Because if you just if you paste it paste it you'll get the formula. 
But if you paste its values, what it does is it looks to see what number the formula has created and then pastes that in. Um, so it's a way of updating your prices that takes two or three minutes rather than two or three hours of manually clicking in, clicking out, and lets you see them all at once. You can see your prices across everything. Um, the being able to see everything at once thing is very useful for things like uh, the weight, which sometimes Squarespace takes it upon itself, especially with the new way that it's doing product variations, which is a step forwards and a step back. Um, it used to be that you had to manually type, if you were going to input them the hard way through the website, you'd have to manually type every single variation of every single product. So if you had a t-shirt in three colours, five sizes, you would have to type 15 things by hand. You'd have to say everything about them. You couldn't duplicate it. It wasn't clever at all. Um, I haven't used many interfaces, but uh, Wix got this one right years ago. Well, Squarespace have finally realised that you can, if you have a system set up so you tell it that your two variables are colour and size, then you tell it the colours and the sizes and it automatically generates all the kind of the, the permutations of it which is great, apart from the fact it now hides them within their own kind of sub-menu thing and doesn't put a weight to any of them. And also, if you delete one of the categories, it, rather than knowing what weight the thing was before, it deletes the weight. Well, I use weight-based shipping calculations. So what happened is the other day I changed something it doesn't tell you it's doing this, but it removed all the weight from all the products. So now when it goes to calculate for shipping, it's putting that thing through at the cheapest possible rate because it thinks it weighs nothing. Um, if you export everything as a CSV, you can just scroll through and make sure that nothing has missing information like that because that could have been, well, never been that costly because I'd have noticed, but if you had that and didn't notice, uh, you would be charging the wrong amount for a bunch of stuff. I only had one order go through and I noticed and changed it. Um, but yeah, it cost me a few pounds on that order because I can't ship a mug for the same price as a 100 gram large letter, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it there. The blog post explains the spreadsheet and that part of it better, but kind of the summary would be that if you're using Squarespace, or if you're using, I don't know, I'd imagine Shopify, because it's supposed to be better all round. I'd imagine they have a similar um, setup that probably works just as well, if not better. But if you're using something that has the option of exporting and importing CSVs, uh, it's well worth becoming familiar enough with Excel or Google Sheets to make the changes within that because, in my opinion, I've only used a handful of shop interfaces, but I have never seen anything get close to touching a spreadsheet for ease of making changes and I'm very glad that um, Squarespace has got that thing right even if there's a bunch of other stuff I don't like about how it does the shop uh, and so yeah check out the blog post for kind of more specific things that hopefully it all makes sense I need to go back and reread it because as I said kind of threw that together this morning but I think it should 